I was wrong about the Sixers, and that's okay. My name is Hawk. Let's talk hoops. Sixers just lost to the Boston Celtics in 7, 112 to 88. Jason Tatum put on an absolute masterclass. 51 points, 17 for 28, 6 for 10 from 3. I got a lot of thoughts on the Sixers. If you don't know, I'm a big Sixers fan, but I want to give the Celtics their flowers first because I think they deserve it. And I got to start with Jason Tatum. At one point in this series, people were, there were rumblings on Twitter. People were starting to have the conversation of, is Jason Tatum him? Is he legitimately a superstar? Because if you look back on this series, there were at least two or three games where he started that first half of those games absolutely horrible. You look back on game five, he started that game bad. You look back even at game six before he went crazy and ballistic in the fourth, his first field goal came midway through the third quarter, but then he went ballistic in the fourth, hits a bunch of threes, and they ended up winning. And when they won, when the Sixers lost game six, I remember looking at my wife and saying, we're not winning in Boston. Jason Tatum, whatever that what moment was for him in the fourth, he woke up, he realized he needs to take over, and he did exactly that for the Boston Celtics in game seven. One of the most impressive things to me about Jason Tatum was that third quarter run. In that third quarter, he ended up going five for seven, four for five from three, 17 points in just the third. And a lot of that came from demanding, getting Joel Embiid into action, getting him uh, to switch on the ball screen and attacking Joel Embiid. Very few guards, forwards, perimeter players I've seen this season attack Joel Embiid the way Jason Tatum did. Jason Tatum in those moments was proving I'm the best player on this court. Joel, you cannot guard me like at all. And you saw it on full display, hitting threes, getting to the basket. He put on an all around masterclass. Shout out to Jason Tatum. I got to give some love to Jalen Brown because all series long, he was a consistent and constant offensive threat for the Boston Celtics. Even in some of those games where Jason Tatum wasn't good in the first half, you would look at the box score and you watch the game, Jalen Brown was consistently, oh let, snap, he's five for eight, he's seven for nine. Like he was highly efficient throughout the entire series and he was a great weapon for them, both offense and defense. I gotta get some love also to Joe Missoula. At one point, people were having the conversation once again of, and that's why, also I think that's why I love basketball because and that's why I love the NBA's playoffs or, or a, seven, a, four, a seven game series because midway through a series, it could be looking like, oh, I don't know. Is this player, is this coach on the line of not being here next season? And they might make an adjustment, figure something out. And next thing you know, you're heading to the Eastern Conference Finals. But I want to bring up Joe Mazzulla because there were moments in the playoffs, even before the Sixers series, back to their time, you know, facing the Hawks in the first round, where there were some moments where people were questioning Joe Mazzulla's fourth quarter decisions, whether it be not calling a timeout, whether it be, you know, taking the ball out of Jalen Brown's hand sometimes when Jason Tatum didn't have it going for certain games. But you know what I saw in game seven? Some nice adjustments from Joe Mazzulla. There were a lot of moments where Joel Embiid would have the ball either at the high post or that short corner that he likes, and he would see three defenders. It'd be Al Horford on him, but then it'd be Mike Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown pinching off, coming off of um, either P.J. Tucker or maybe even like a Tobias Harris and just not leaving them open, but trusting that we can then fight and make those rotations and get back to shooters. And then, especially in game seven, they did an excellent job at that. Joel Embiid had a horrible game this game, and we'll get to him in a moment. And also shout out to Al Horford, because even when they weren't tripling and, you know, bringing those pinching in from the wings, the guards coming down to make it more difficult for Joel, Al Horford played some really good defense. He had that game earlier in the series where he ended up with four blocks on Joel. I think he had three blocks in this game seven. Al Horford has been... I'm going to say it, the Joel Embiid stopper for the last four or five seasons. And at one point, the Sixers even thought, oh, well, let's just bring Al Horford on our team. And that did not work out at all. But Al Horford and the Celtics jersey has been phenomenal in terms of guarding Joel Embiid when they match up against each other. I really got to say shout out to the Celtics because top to bottom, this is a really solid and really good roster. You got your all-star superstar player in Jason Tatum. You have, honestly, another guy who, depending on the night, can be just as good, if not better, in Jalen Brown. Al Horford and Robert Williams... They're going to surprise you and do some really good things defensively. I think Robert Williams, we all know what he can do defensively, but Al, he's going to mess around and knock a couple threes down. He's going to play some solid defense. Marcus Smart is going to bring some energy and some defense to you. But then you got guys like Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon who are going to... That Malcolm Brogdon game, I want to say it was game three or four, where he was just killing from three beyond the arc. When, uh, and it was another game where Jason Tatum wasn't having the greatest night offensively, and Malcolm Brogdon stepped up for them. So this Celtics roster, we need to talk about a guy like Grant Williams... Um, this Celtics roster, top to bottom, is really, really good. They've got a lot of two-way guys who can space the floor a little bit, knock down a couple of shots, and they trust in their superstars. They trust in their superstars, and, and in this case, in Jason Tatum's case, in this Game 7, 
their superstars are not afraid of the moment and he stepped up big so i gotta tip my hat to them truthfully as much as it pained me to watch this game and watch my sisters get actually demolished watching jason tatum basically be like yo give me the ball get out of my way we're not losing this game it was impressive and as just a fan of basketball i enjoyed watching it because he was making some wild stuff it was some moments where i mean joel was in there he did this hand was up and jason tatum was like it doesn't matter you can't stop me so shout out to the celtics and let's switch gears and talk about my sixers truthfully i almost don't even know where to start i'm gonna start with joel i think there were a lot of times in game six especially down the stretch i this was all over the internet everyone was talking about it on twitter i put out a couple of tweets about it talking about the fact the simple fact that joel got one field goal up in the last five minutes of game six wow meanwhile jason tatum is going crazy demanding the ball and killing it and in in this game there's some stretches throughout the entire series where joel i felt wasn't demanding the ball wasn't getting the ball enough and it's twofold threefold to be honest with you the first and honestly i think the most the part that has the most responsibility in my opinion is on Joel Embiid because when I think of and we and and, and the reason I feel like I can say this so confidently because I just saw Jason Tatum do it and drop 51 on us when if you're supposed to be the superstar and if you're feel like you're not getting the ball and not getting shots up you have to demand it like you have to literally just be like yo next person who, who takes a shot without without me touching the ball is getting punched in the throat like that's the type of you can say I'm being over exaggerating and say we're overreacting, but when you're the supposed superstar of your team, you're expected to try to take those shots down the stretch. And there were a lot of times during the series where he simply did not do that. And if you miss them, you miss them. And then maybe we have the conversation of maybe you're not that superstar, but if you just completely avoid taking them, that's unacceptable. That's one. Two is Doc why are we not drawing up more plays to get joel involved and get him the ball right that's on the coach to make sure your best player gets the ball third is part is james harden and part of just the, the rest of the team as a collective especially down the stretch even in this game there were plenty of times where down the stretch of game six and even some moments in this game in game seven plenty of times where harden just felt like he was just dribbling the air out of the ball i mean dribbling the ball for 15 seconds on a 24 second shot clock and even in this game there were a bunch of possessions where joel's literally launching the uh, launching a three at the rim double teamed with the shot clock expiring how is that the shot we're getting in offensive possessions it's because all we run is a pick and roll and a pick and roll and a pick and roll and for majority of this game harden wasn't looking to score he was and doc river said it in this post game press conference i ended up watching it live i don't think it's up on youtube yet so unfortunately i don't have it here for y'all but one of the things doc river said in reference to james harding passing out of a lot of the pick and roll situations hitting maxi a lot hitting uh tobias a lot like i said um earlier tobias was one for seven from three maxi was two for six from three melton was one for five from three harding was one for five from three kicking it out to shooters which is technically the right shot but you after a while you got to realize there's a reason they're open the celtics are leaving them open because they're bricking harding wasn't looking to be aggressive to go to the basket and and get shots up at the rim and you can say well hawk i mean joel's the superstar well we already covered that joel should have demanded the ball more and got out of Harden's hands because i'll live and die with joel go and i'd rather he was five for 18 go five for 28 like shoot 10 more times at this rate because there was nothing no one else had it going because that's also the point when you're the superstar in a game like this if no one else got it going you might as well take every shot james harden had his up and ups and downs in this series he had two games where he had 40 and then he had other games where he just was a goose egg did absolutely nothing for us and was missing shots that you would see him make just the game prior i think it's twofold i do think james harden is just getting older those injuries might be catching up to him and a lot of times where he might get to the rim and is just short like he laying it up and it's just short or he's shooting it and it's just short but also sometimes to me at least the shots he take don't feel like good shots if they go in you're like okay great it went in but honestly still sometimes when you take it i'd be like oh why did he shoot that and then it goes in i'm like oh, okay well i guess i can't say much looking to the off season because i can ramble on about the sixers forever i don't expect james harden to be here from keep it a bean honestly i don't expect doc to be here to keep it a bean i'm very curious to see what the, i don't have the answers right now at the top of my head on what the roster should be who the coach should be there's already rumors swelling from sixers fans that they want monty williams because the Suns just fired him coaches are getting fired left and right this offseason apparently this is a bad way to go out yeah we made it to game seven but this was an embarrassing loss in game seven this was a no energy no effort 
they didn't even come out like they wanted to be there i want to say we start out as a game one for six or oh for five something like that and the, we just let them go on a crazy run in that third quarter and it wasn't even them once again i keep going back to this third because in that third quarter they outscored us 33 to 10. at one point i want to say it was 55 to 55 and then at the end of that run it was like 80 something to 60. they went on like a 22 23 to 5 run over the course of the third quarter you're not gonna win that that's the energy and effort thing that is we don't want to be here we don't want to be here and that time frame joel was 0 for 4 like what are we doing what are we doing this is what it is shout out to the celtics man absolutely amazing game from y'all in that game seven y'all wanted it more and y'all proved it and y'all won on y'all home court so salute to y'all sixers <laughs> i'll catch y'all in the next one i'm out peace